All right, it's time for us to build the actual home page for our website, which remember, it gives the user some options for what they want their password to look like. Like for example, how many characters should be in the password, should it include capitals, numbers, like all those different things here. So let's go ahead and work on our template for the home page. Okay, so up here, I'm gonna make this an H1 tag. Usually H1 is a great way to signify like what that page is about. So I'm gonna call this password generator. Okay, and we're gonna get rid of that password uh, that we have. And instead, what we're gonna add here is something called a form. So in HTML, anytime that you wanna send information from one page to another, so for example, on our homepage, someone's gonna enter in like how long they want it, the capitalization, all that stuff. That information is captured in a form and then we use that to send that information to another page which will ultimately generate that random password eventually. So we're gonna make a new form. So let's just go ahead and make a form tag here. We gotta make sure that we also make an ending form with this most HTML tags, you have to have an opening and closing one that has that ending slash on it. Not true for all, which is annoying, uh, but with this form, we have to specify what page we want it to go to next. So for example, we're gonna say action, which is what specifies where it should go. And then we have to give the name of some sort of website. So we'll just leave that blank for now, but know that that's something we're gonna to have to work on later. Then here inside of the form, how is it that we can capture some information? So there's lots of different things that you can put in a form. You can have like a little text label to let someone type in something. Uh, you can have a drop down, which we're gonna be using to say how many uh, you know, characters they want. Uh, you can use, I think there's like date pickers. There's also check boxes, which we're gonna be using. There's radio buttons, all sorts of things out there. But let's go ahead and start first with that drop down box, which in HTML is called a select. So we're gonna say select. Okay, and I had an autocomplete thing here, but just make sure you have the opening select tag. We don't need the class here. We do need the name here, and this is just saying uh, what this represents. So in this case, it represents the length of how long they want the password to be. So have the opening select tag where we have name equal to length, and then we'll have the ending select tag. Okay, so if we just go ahead and save this and then see what our homepage looks like now, you can see there's a drop down, but there's no information inside of there. So how do we provide options uh, for the user of our website? Well, it's literally called options. So we say option as the opening tag, and then we go ahead and make an ending option tag, okay? And with this, we go ahead and we first put something that's going to be to show up. Like if I put the number six here and we go back and reload the page, that shows up just fine. This is a, a detail that's gonna come into play in the next video, but uh, what we need here is to also specify that the value is going to be equal to, and make sure it's in double quotes, the same information. So the reason for this is we could have something like uh, six char long, something like that. Like we could have a much more like text heavy thing here, but the actual data representation of that is just the number six. That's why it's specified, but I think it just is nice to have them the same here, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this a couple of times, uh, just so that we have a few options here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put those in. We'll hit save. Now go back to the home page and look, we now inside of the drop down have all these different options. So someone could pick this or that, okay? so. Now that we have that, the question is, how do we make it so that there's a button that says, you know, hey, I want to generate the password, move on to the next web page. Well, we go back to Adam here. Uh, outside of the select, but while still inside of the form, we are going to create an input tag. So inputs can be like things for, um, you know, a text field, like I said, but they can also be a button to submit the form. And that's a special kind of input. So we're gonna go ahead and specify here that the type is equal to submit. And we want to say uh, what we want inside of that button. So we're gonna say value, and we're gonna set that equal to something like generate password. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this. Let's go back to our homepage, reload the page, and look at that. We now get this button that, uh, you know, we can pick an option and then say generate password, and boom it doesn't go anywhere. Now there's a little bit of a clue. If we look up 
uh, top here at the URL, there's now this question mark and the term length equal to seven. And if I like make it eight and hit generate password, it changes to eight. So kind of cool that we can see that this thing is alive, but we ultimately want it to go to another page where we can show the user their password. So we know how to do this. Let's go back to our urls.py, okay? The eggs example was kind of a silly one. So let's go ahead and re, uh, replace that with one that says password. And uh, instead of going to views.eggs, we want it to go to views.password. Now with this, this is kind of a small thing, but I think good for you to know is that typically with paths, people like to put an ending trailing slash on it. The reason for this is so that you could go to like either your website slash password or your website slash password and then have an ending slash you know it's just it's kind of a preference thing but if you add this ending slash both will work uh just thought i'd throw that out there okay so we have the path for password now we have to go to our views and replace eggs with uh password okay and we want to render an html page so i'm going to copy what we had above paste it down here. We don't need to pass in anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete what we have there, simplify. We don't want home.html. This should be something like password.html, okay? Which means we need to, inside of our templates and inside of the generator folder, create a new file called password.html, okay? And here we'll just say something like password. So if you know if we see password in all caps that this worked, okay? So if we go back to our homepage and we just tried to reload and hit this, it's still not going to work. And the reason for that is that this form doesn't know where to go to. Remember that action? So we've got to go back to Adam and go to our home.html and say the action here should be that we move to password, okay? So we'll go ahead and put that in, save that. If now we reload this page and I hit generate password, Whoa, look what happens. It sends us to slash password, and then it has in all caps password. So this worked. We, you know, hit, put the information in the form, and it sent us to the appropriate page where eventually we're going to reveal the password to the user. Now, one small thing that I want to mention here is that it's not always the greatest name to just, or it's not always the greatest way to just put the name of the exact page that you're looking for. So for example, let's say in our URLs, I don't really like the name password for the file. I, I want this to say uh, something like generated password, okay? So I save this, and if I come back to my homepage and I hit generate password, well, now I get an error because it's trying to go to the password even though the new URL here is generated password. Well, if I go back to my home.html, I can replace password here if I say curly brackets and then put a parenthesis on either side. So I've got kind of the opening and closing. You can remember this is very close to the, you know, double curly brackets. You'll you'll come to learn in Django when you should use the double curly brackets and when you should use the single curly with the parenthesis. But uh, for now, just remember, if you want to reference a URL, we can say URL space and then use quotes and put in the name of that URL. So in this case, I'm going to call it password. And if we're going to reference a URL by its name, it has to have a name. So if we go back to our URLs, I'm going to say inside of this path, I'm going to add one more comma at the end here. And I'm going to say name is equal to password. Okay. So to prove that this works, I'm going to go back to the home page. Okay. I'm going to hit generate password and look what happens. It sent me to generated password. So essentially what's happened here is inside of my home.html, it says, hey, make a URL uh, for the password URL. So then it goes to my urls.py and it says, hey, any of these paths have the name equal to password? Oh, this one does. Uh, looks like it should be generated password. And then it plops that in there for us. Okay. Now it's important to note, it's referencing this name equal to password. It doesn't matter that this is views.password or generated password. Like these things do not need to all be the same thing, but typically they usually are. Um, but just know it's looking for whatever name is equal to. So uh, I'm going to put this back to password just like we had. And let's go back to our homepage here. You can see now that page doesn't work anymore. And if we hit generate password, it sends us over to the password. So now we're at an exciting point in our project. 
We just have to learn how to create a random password for the user.